how anybody could do this job and not fall in love with everything that comes in the door. I do not know. Almost 12 million companion animals enter animal shelters nationwide every year. Our shelter used to just about euthanize everything that came in. In response to this crisis, a network of volunteers and rescue organizations strive to save as many of these pets as possible. Go up and some more kennels up, find right. somewhere to drop them off, and I'll put them in there. Okay. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> okay. Members of Clearwater Digital Media Productions got the opportunity to visit one of these shelters and participate in a dog rescue transport. You guys are like zombies. Mm. Our journey began at 4 a.m. We loaded up and headed for the animal control shelter in Chipley. No whining and rescue. Ow! No whining and rescue. The transport starts in Chipley, Florida. It's a rural town, and you have a small population of people. There's not enough homes, and there's too many homeless dogs. So by transporting them from Chipley, to areas like the Tampa Bay, they have a much higher chance of being saved and finding their forever homes. Welcome to nowhere. The shelter was a little bit more than off the beaten path, with no signs to be seen from the road. So this is it right here. But cries could be heard from the road, and inside were abandoned dogs waiting to be rescued. It's important to get the dogs out of Chipley, relative, as in any shelter, relatively quick, quickly because of the high stress level that the dogs have in the shelters. All right, Muffin. When they're in these kennels for a long time, sometimes they'll get a little kennel aggressive, mm -hmm. and, and then they don't present kennel, well. Kennel when, when people go, my, they're really ugly, yet you take them out of the kennel and they're wonderful. Oh, yeah. So, you know, there's just so many reasons it's not a good idea to hold them too long. Typically, shelters can't hold the dogs for more than five days, which means there are so many loving companions that are running out of time. So when you go on these transports, it just breaks your heart to think that because of their location, they might die and not ever find a home. Despite having such a short period of time before being euthanized, the shelter had a 95% out alive rate, and it wouldn't be possible without all of the hard-working staff and volunteers. We go up and we load up the, the crates with as many dogs as we can. There's plenty of puppies too. And Leonard Sharp will take his van and put 25 crates. And a lot of times those crates will have a mom with seven, 10, 13 puppies at one time. You got 17 pups in there and a mama and a cat. All right. You have to have people willing to do a lot more work than you're getting paid for to is. get animals out of here. Pick up puppies. There's a lot of much nicer shelters and much better areas that don't have an out of life rate like we do. But we work on it 24 hours a day. Yeah. Any given Saturday, you'll find a group of people that load up their cars with crates, fill up their, their tanks with gas, and get as many dogs as they can to a safer location. We do that because sometimes the only difference between life and death is that, that ride. One of the biggest reasons for the overpopulation of dogs is that they aren't being spayed and neutered by their owners, and many of these dogs end up being turned into shelters. Well, unfortunately, people have to turn in their dogs for various reasons. Sydney here was an, um, an owner turned in because the, the people had absolutely no time for her. And because they had no time for her, she was not socialized. And because she was not socialized, she would have been a very difficult dog to place. Um, the first day we brought her in, she tried to bite two people. So I kept her. It's one dog at a time. We were transporting a mixed puppy named Indigo to a rescue where she would be one step closer to finding her forever home. Okay, bye y'all. Put a treat in your okay. hand. Oh, with the treats. Happy. Happy. It's not that hard.
Back on the road, we met with another transport volunteer and picked up a German Shepherd pup named Hoppy. But Indigo still wasn't used to other dogs since being in the kennels. Hand over indigo, and then we'll evaluate this shepherd. I don't know what his personality okay, is well, like. Okay, well, Miss Ryan, I got a. I understand that, but you see this big dog? Oh. I'm not gonna have. Oh him. my lord! When we dropped off indigo, we picked up another German shepherd named Bullet. That is full grown. And Bullet got to ride shotgun all the way to the last stop, a six-hour drive to where we met with Heidi's legacy dog rescue. Come on, good boy! Heidi's legacy took Hoppy and Bullet. They would take care of them and prepare them to be adopted. And they had other dogs with them that they had rescued from careless owners. She was found on the side of the road next to her dead mother. She had a broken leg and she was split wide open with a knife all around her midsection. You can see the indentation. It's okay, baby girl. If you want to help out, there are many ways you can. Get involved with a rescue organization or become a foster. Spay and neuter your own pets and encourage everyone else to do the same. People need to spay and neuter their dogs and realize that we have an overpopulation of pets. And that shelters don't just have mutts or aggressive dogs. They have adoptable purebreds that are loving companion dogs. And if you're thinking about going to a pet store, if you're thinking about going to a breeder, think about adopting before you buy because um, you could save a life.